know is king. I'm sure it's king. When I look back over my life, it was king that brought me down. worship experience want to encourage you listen to God Amen. there's a word in Philippians chapter 3 bid you good morning we're in a study following in the footsteps of the Apostle Paul Concerning vision, and more specifically, the vision of God for our lives, individually and collectively. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse number 18, where there is no vision. Other passages, other translations would say something like, where there is no revelation, right? Meaning a word of instruction from God. People perish. <clears throat> we run wild. We cast off restraint. We act like, like we're not supposed to act. And so it becomes important, essential, that we look into the word of God so that we might know and learn what God would have us to do before we take the next step. Yes. The next step is always the most important step. Thank you, Lord. And we want to take that next step in the direction of God. Amen. The Apostle Paul outlines a prescription, if you will, that helps and equips you and I on the process of arriving at God's vision for our lives. Yes. And uh, certainly in this case, with respect to our home church. Amen. Vision is a God thing. But it's also a human thing. Which makes it a church thing. Okay. Come on, We're looking at Philippians chapter 3. And we are being led by God as to how we can arrive at the vision of God for our lives so that we can take the next step 
and be on the path to the next level. Paul begins by giving us the first clue. In verse number 12 of Philippians 3, he says, Not that I have already not that I have already attained yes. or am already perfected. So, notice where he begins. He begins by making an admission, an honest one, of his condition. Listen, I, you know, watch, look up, read, continue reading. But I you press know, on. But, but I press on. No, I follow. I like King James. This is King James, right? Yeah. Yes. But I follow after. See. All right. I follow after. Read. That I may lay hold. That I may lay hold. Of that. King James says apprehend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, <clears throat> I've been arrested once or twice. So that word apprehended, I take it personal. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if there's one thing I remember about being under arrest, is you don't do what you want. You do as you are told. Yes. Come on, preacher. So in Paul's honest admission. You understand why he says, I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So as we begin the journey towards vision, we need to understand or even ask ourselves the question, when last have you and I been apprehended. The, the, the being under arrest is relevant to the honest admission slash confession. Y'all see what I'm saying? So when he says, when he says, I have not yet arrived, I've done some stuff. I've accomplished some stuff in the flesh. But God arrested me for something. Yes. Come on, preach. So when I see myself with all that I've done in the flesh, now what God arrested me for becomes my vision. What God arrested me for becomes my vision. That's what I'm after. Yes, sir. My future has already been decreed by God. And that's what vision is. It's a picture of your preferred future. Mm. Right? You work hard 12, 12 months a year. You want to go on vacation at the point of your choice during the year. Yes. That's your vision. And you go about planning that. Right? Amen. Don't overlook the fact that vision must come through God. Go ahead and make your plans and want what you want. But if God didn't arrest you and put it on your heart, you're just doing your thing. I've done my thing enough. I'm, I'm, man, look. I don't want to do nobody else's thing but God's thing. You too? You sure? All you want to do is God's thing. Amen. You know, you know, I was driving, I was driving, I was driving to church this morning and, and I was listening to this song called For Your Glory. And in the words of the song, the song, the, the song, the song 
The songster, the person singing, said, I will do anything for your glory. And you know, I've heard that song. I like the song. It's on my list. But this morning, I heard, I'll do anything like I've never heard it before. Right? Because what I heard this morning was, if my life is going to bring God glory, then I'll do anything. Okay, that was my word for today. Amen. Right? So, you understand that every word I say to you today, it's not all about you and it's not all about me. It's so that God, so that God can get some glory from what I say. If God's son can get some glory, then I know he's going to bless you with it. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? All right, so... Um, God arrested me for something, and now because I can make an honest admission, I have a holy ambition, Amen. which is I follow after. You know why it's holy? Because God is the one who got me under arrest. Yes. Right? Y'all all right? Amen. I have not arrived. There's some stuff that God has in your and my future that we cannot see until we are honest about our current situation. And when he looked at himself, he was able to glimpse all that God had before him. And he made up his mind, I'm going after that. So in verse 13, he says, brethren, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. He's just repeating what he said in verse 12, right? When he said, I've not yet arrived, I'm either, um, either made perfect, right? In other words, I'm, I'm saved, I'm fully saved, right? But I ain't fully grown. And if you look at the things that are listed in verse 7, they're all physical, Which means, when we're looking for vision, we ain't looking for material stuff. Yes. We're looking for spiritual stuff. All right, amen. You can come up with physical stuff on your own a dime a dozen. And you ain't looking really for God to tell, instruct you on that. If you feel like boom, 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 right? Sometimes, we, okay, sometimes we like that. Right? I know everything. I went over, I went over, and it took me a little while to give up the rights to myself. Come on, I feel like God understands. He understands. I, I need this. I need that. God should, you know, God knows that he under, I'll be right. Until I, until I started to learn that, you know, God promised to supply all of our needs. Yes. You know? And... <laughs> God has already met so many of our wants. Come on, preacher. Without us asking, that we should feel some holy discontent about asking him for more wants as opposed to asking him for our needs. See, that's what Paul did. Paul said, look at all this stuff, Paul, God bless me with. I don't want no more physical stuff. I want some material, I want some spiritual stuff. Yes. Yes. More, and, and, and in verse 8, um, in verse 10, he, in verse 8, 9, and 10, he itemizes, he said, that I might gain Christ. In verse 9, he says, that I might be found in Christ. Right? So, so if you're here, and you're not in Christ, you have not been baptized into Christ, this word is for you. Right? That I may gain Christ, that I may be found in Christ, and that I may know Christ. Yes. And so we drew the principle um, um, in, our, in, our, in our teaching and preaching thus far that if I could have everything without Christ, or nothing but Christ, 
I would want to do like Paul and choose nothing but Christ. And so that we could be Holy Spirit honest, we mentioned the fact that he mentioned in verse, in verse 8, right, of Philippians 3, that he, he counted all down and he suffered loss. Read verse 8. Philippians yet 3 indeed, verse 8. Of what? Yet indeed. Yet indeed. I also count all things lost. I also count all things lost. For the excellency, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus my Lord, Lord. For whom I have suffered. The loss of all things. Right? And that's where we connected. When I first told you, no Christ you know, knowing Christ was more valuable than anything else, and we ought to be willing to choose nothing but Christ. Everybody said, yeah, but when I acknowledge that it's going to cost some pain, yes, that's when we connected, right? Because it's one thing to say knowing Christ is the most valuable thing in my life, but until we acknowledge the pain, you are not convinced yet. Well, Neither was I. Right? It's the conviction that, you know, it's going to cost something. Yes, sir. Right? And the realization that it's going to cost more. It's going to cost more. When knowing Christ is not the most valuable thing in my life. Um, so he gets to verse 13 and says, and this is, where I, this is where I want to spend the rest of my time, our time. I count not myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do. But one thing, right? So, so watch this, right? From the admission or the confession, he develops an ambition because he realizes that God has a very bright future for him. Yes. So he's no longer content with the things of the flesh. He wants more of Christ. All right. All right. He wants more of Christ. His discontent was holy because stuff and junk and things were worth feces. When compared to the knowledge or knowing Christ. A word on that. You can know about Christ and not know Christ at all. Hmm. Well. It's like making a pie or a cake from a cookbook and calling your mama on the phone. The cookbook can give you the instructions letter for letter. How much of this, how much of that, add everything, boom, 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 boom. And the cake still might not come out right. Amen? Amen. But when you call mama, grandma, grandma can tell you what to do or what not to do so that the cake comes out better next time. Knowing Christ is like having mama on the grandma on the phone so that you don't mess it up. The, inf the information in the word of God needs to connect with the living or the life of Christ where we are living. Knowing Christ is experiencing Christ in our lives. Manifest presence in our lives. Big difference. That's one reason why when God speaks, you and I ought to listen with the intent to obey. It improves our hearing. Not yet. I count. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. So now he has a single concentration. 
One thing. <clears throat> when Mary and Martha were hosting Jesus at the crib, the text suggests that both of them were in the kitchen doing a good work, preparing the meal. I don't even think Jesus was interested in eating. Jesus rolls up, knock, 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 comes inside. Martha says, see, Mary says, see you, Martha. Martha chases up in the living room after Mary, in the kitchen after Mary. What's up with that? Jesus says, one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen the best. Don't allow serving God to negatively impact sitting at the feet of God. Both of them are good. One is the best. Y'all following what I'm saying? The rich young ruler rolls up on Jesus. Master, what God? Jesus, Jesus told him, look, 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 look. One thing you lack. He was telling Jesus about what he knew from a child. But he didn't realize that his money was his God. And I learned something from that. Before we say God is the head of my life, Check with the competition. Check with the next thing. And that's usually what your God is. Help us, preachers. So he says, This what? So, brethren, what I, my point is could it be that the key? to the Christian life is a one thing mindset. Yes, sir. Listen, if you don't set your mind, the devil will set it for you. Yes. You ain't got, listen, you ain't got to worry. The devil will set it for you. Develop a one thing mindset. Now, Paul tells us how to do it. But before, before we get there, let me show, can we talk for a minute? There are a few terms that connect to the, cons, the one thing mindset. The one thing I do mindset. mindset. The first term, term is, let's call it dabble mindedness. Paul was not a dabbler. Okay, you don't, you, don't, you don't like that term. Um, how about, how about, let's see now, multitasking. Yes. Come on, preacher. You don't like that one either. Okay. How about ADD? What's that, what's that again? Attention. I'm glad you said that. I was going back to say something else. And really what that has to do with is trying to do too many things at one time. Yes. That's what a dabbler is. A dabbler has S-A-D-D. -D, Come on, preacher. Spiritual attention deficit disorder. Yes. We just dabbling, trying to do a, okay, well, I'm just saying something to think about. And then there is the narrow-minded person. Come on, preacher. Now, Paul already confessed that because he said, look, I've not yet arrived. In other words, there's still some more stuff I got to know. The narrow-minded person already arrived at the point where they know everything about everything. Yeah. Word of caution is that that's just a dangerous place to be in. Very dangerous, right? 
Now, then there is, so there's a narrow-minded, and now there is the double-minded. Y'all heard about the double-minded man? Is un- oh, that's you? I didn't, man, I didn't see you. He must have just snuck in on me. Um, a double-minded man is unstable in his ways, right? So you, you, know, you know how you... Here one minute. Here one minute. And before the day is over, you, 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 you were supposed to fix the fence... But you fixed a hole in the chicken coop, coop. You, you, you pick some corn. You, you woke up this morning to fix the gate. But on the way to your gate, you did everything on the way. All right, all right, all right. The, na- the, the single-minded person is the person, are you listening? Who keeps the main thing the main thing. Focus. 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 We were talking this morning about the PIP. You all know what the PIP is? On your TV. Okay, you don't have it. All right, it's okay. It's a picture. I heard somebody say picture in picture. Right? Where on the big screen, you can watch the Super Bowl. But on the little screen, you can watch a game, maybe a game that's going on that's not as important. So you have two scenes on the screen. On the main screen, you have the main game. On the little screen, you have the not so main game. And that's sometimes how we do God. We have our lives on the main screen. But God is on the little screen. And we can turn him on and off as our heart's desire because we do not have a one thing I do mindset. Your life, my life, is not the main thing. God is. And the life of God inside of our lives, that's the main screen. Jesus has one primary interest. Matthew 28. All power and authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 18. Go ye therefore make disciples of all the nations. Of all nations. Baptizing them baptizing them in, in the, the name, name of, of the Father and Father of the Son and, Son and the Holy Spirit. Teaching, teaching them, them to, to observe, observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Jesus says primary, Jesus says one thing is to make disciples. And this is why, as we talk about vision for Maywood, our one word, mindset, is missional. Because whatever Jesus' primary interest is, needs to become ours. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this year, the word around here is missional. Amen. Making disciples. One thing. Do you hear me? One thing. Making disciples. In 
if you attending an L2G, and of course that is encouraged. Amen. There's a program that's to be covered there that makes disciples. Yes. You can't make a disciple if you're not a disciple yourself. Yes. Come on, preacher. Right? Amen. So that's being covered in our L2G. So now, before I finish that, well, let me finish this. <laughs> let me at least put a dent in it. See where he says, forget those things which are behind? One thing, mindset, involves forgetting and reaching forward. That's right. Right? It's a coordinating conjunction. You can't leave either one of them out. Right? To forget doesn't mean to erase your memory because you can't do that. Right? It means... Leave the past in the past and not live there. Amen. Help us, preacher. Don't live in the past. Learn from the past. And when you don't live in the past, you will reach far to the things which are in front. You can't do the latter without doing the former. You got to let it all go. You got to dig a hole, go outside in your backyard, dig a hole, and put everything in there and bury it. Yes. And leave it there. Don't go picking it back up. <laughs> all right? All them sins, all them, all them sins. I remember one time a young lady called me on the phone. But Lopez, you know, how do you forgive yourself? She had done something, and she felt like she couldn't forgive us. And at the time, I didn't know what, I didn't know what to tell the sister. Because, I, you, know, I, you know, I was so glad that Christ died and that he shed his blood on the cross that all I needed to do was to repent, boom shakalaka. And if God, if God forgive me, shoot, I ought to be able, I ought to, be able to move on. Because it, <laughs> me remembering the sin could keep me out of heaven on, after God has already for what's the point Come on, preacher. what's the point in feeling guilty for something that you have already been forgiven by God Thank you, Jesus. it, it, blew, it kind of blew me away so all I could tell the poor sister was even after I went and investigated was look you need to be satisfied yes. with the fact that God forgive you Amen. and get over yourself. Amen. Come on, preacher. And you know, I got freedom for myself because I realized <laughs> I had done some stuff too. That I was holding on to. It's amazing how, you know, when people roll up on me, mm -hmm. I, when they leave, I used to just get upset and just, you know. <laughs> Bad preacher. I don't do that no more. Amen. Right? I test the validity of their comment by asking, is it true? <laughs> and if it's true, then I got to do something about it. Forget why am I wasting time getting upset at something you brought up to me that is true? Yes. No, no, no. I activate my spirit to fix it. Amen. And so even if I act up, I'm thanking God for you because you just helped me. Yes. That word behind is the same word behind in Matthew 16, I think. Where Jesus said to, the, to, to Peter, get, get the... Peter was bothering Jesus. And it's not that Peter was Satan, but Satan was using him to bother Jesus. See, so sometimes when people roll up on you, you just need to be to understand. You know, because people, some people won't let you forget your past. No, sir. No, sir. 
<clears throat> they won't let you forget your past. As if they ain't have none. The things that you are to forget are the things that keep hassling you to hold you back from the one thing I do mindset. And what you need to do is to speak to the mountain and say, get thee behind me. It ain't personal. Get thee behind me, Satan. I am forgetting my past. Because that's the only way I can reach forth. Now reaching forth. Athletic term. It means to strain forward. The picture is we're approaching the finish line. And I want to finish before everybody else. So I start doing the turtle. But in that, listen to me please. The principle is I give God the best of me. I'm not living in my comfort zone. I'm in my stretch zone. I'm in my strain. Listen, you can't move forward. Okay, G, sit down. I've got you. You can't move forward. I mean, please. You can't move forward looking back. You can't move forward Stuck on, Come on. Come on what's behind you. Thank you, Jesus. You have to make an effort, right? Yeah. Reaching forth requires effort. Amen. Right? We talked about it in Bible class. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you can accomplish without effort is failure. Everything requires effort. Everything. We have to make an effort to make disciples our one thing mindset as a church. That's where vision has taken us for 2020. The spirit of the effort is captured in the word diligence. Diligence means maximum effort. Study, 2 Timothy 2.15, give diligence to show thyself approved of God, unto God. A workman that needed not be a shit. Do you know what happens when we are not diligent in our effort? We wind up being ashamed. You know that's right. And when I talk about diligence, stay with me. I know where we are. I'm talking about diligence on three levels. The spirit, the soul, and the body. All three. Because just like God is in three persons, we exist in three places. In the spirit, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse number 23. In the soul and in the body. To be diligent in spirit means that we need to practice things like prayer, fasting, spiritual stuff. Worship, giving. On the soul level, we're talking about planning, strategizing. We've got some strategists around here, 
right? There's one over there. There's one over there. Where that other one at? All right, well, the rest of you I'm going to discover. <laughs> now, here's the point. Until we are diligent in the spirit and diligent in the soul, the diligence in the body ain't got nothing to do with spiritual things. Because it's the mind that tells the body what to do. And if the body is not getting its cue from a diligent spirit, from a diligent soul, you just pass in time. That's it, preacher. You'll survive, but you will never thrive spiritually. And in order to practice that, here's what we're going to do. We first said, remember, daily devotion activates God's vision. We're going to pray daily. Every member should be praying Philippians 1, 9 to 11 every day. The second thing we're going to do as a one thing we do attitude is to bring your one weekly. Ask God, ask God to put at least one person on your heart to bring to Christ. Because our one thing I do mentality is making disciples. I'm casting vision. Y'all, can y'all see this? Some of you got stuck on thinking, what? At least try. Pray about one person. Give their name. Give their names to Sister Solia. Raise your hand, Sister Solia. Give their names to Sister Because we're going to be praying for that person. You're not on your side. We, we're not asking you to do this so that you alone can... No, 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 no. It's a church. This is church vision. God is just using you to be involved in it. S two steps thus far. There are five. As we break it out, we'll give them to you. Pray daily, Philippians 1, 9 to 11. Bring your one weekly. Everybody got that? All right. Let me close. <clears throat> Let me close. See, now he smiled and let me stop. A young lady, kind of cute, and her grandmother was riding on the train. And a soldier, a young soldier boy, mm -hmm. and his commanding officer happened to be getting on the same train and having to sit across from the young lady and her grandma. <laughs> I'm getting ready to take this off. Um, <coughs> while they're making small talk, the young lady and the young soldier boy, their eyes, well, you know. You do know, right? Yeah, yeah they kind of, they kind of, you know. They connect, yes, they connected. You know. I, I, I imagine there was some winking and all that going on. Right about then, they enter a tunnel. Everything got pitch black. And two sounds were heard, distinctive sounds, right? One was the smack of a kiss, and the other was the whack of a slap. <laughs> so, Grandma is thinking, It's all right. 
that the guy, the young soldier, kissed his granddaughter. But thank God, he got what he deserved. Y'all follow me? The commanding officer said, I can understand why he would kiss the girl, but his grandmother, her grandmother <coughs> missed slapping the soldier and slapped me. <laughs> Y'all following me? The young lady was like, ooh, I'm glad he kissed me. But why did my grandmother have to slap him? You see what's going on? The young fella, <coughs> trains, coming out, <laughs> trains coming out from the tunnel. And he can't wipe the smile off of his face. He's glad as heck. Because he got to kiss a pretty girl and slap his CEO. Boom, zaga, laga, laga. And he got away with it. What's the point? He redeemed, he took, he grasped the opportunity to do two things. He redeemed the time. Y'all see what I'm saying? And so, as we close, let's redeem the time, beloved. Let's do like Paul says. Let's follow after. One thing. Let's seize the day. Let's seize the moment. God brought us here. It may appear that you got here on your own, but none of us did. God brought us here. He's got a vision for this church. It, and, and the voice that we hear is focus on discipleship. Amen. Let's make the most of it today while it is day and climb on board. If you're here today, all I'm asking you to do is to be involved in New Maywood Church of Christ 2020 vision is to pray Philippians 1, 9 to 11 daily and bring your one weekly. If you're here and you're not in Christ, in Philippians 3, in verse number 9, Paul says, and be found in him, not living by my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness, which is of faith. Right? In Christ. See, when you're in Christ, you are righteous. You don't have to earn righteousness. Only God can make you righteous. And in order for God to make you righteous, you need to hear how he loved you so much Man, ain't nobody that's going to love you like God loves you. And ain't nothing you or I can do about it. God loves you. And he proved it. He sent us. No, God shouldn't have to beg you and I to serve him. God shouldn't have to beg you and I to, to, to obey him. He deserves our, he deserves our obedience. By what he did. By what he gave. He deserves it. I'm just asking you to give God what he deserves and obey. Say yes to the gospel of Christ. Be willing to repent. Be willing to be willing to, to be willing to be willing to confess Christ with the mouth and be baptized in water. Be apprehended today. So that you can lay hold of what God 
apprehended you for in the watery grave of baptism. If, you, if you're in, if, you, if, you, if you're here today and you need to respond to the invitation either to begin to get into Christ or you're in Christ and you want to be involved in New Maywood Church of Christ 2020 vision. The Savior to heaven, the Yeah.